Today I'm at Black Mountain Cycle Centre near Abergavenny in Wales and who do you think you're looking at, Tree? Take that! It's a beautiful day here in Wales, it's dry and the temperatures are in the high 20s, which is perfect because I'm riding Black Mountain Cycle Centre for the very first time. If you're a regular viewer, you'll know I'm a pretty accomplished rider, completely bossing skills like pedalling and sometimes turning too. I can also pull off some pretty steezy combos like pedalling and turning at the same time. Despite all that, I'll be sticking to the blue trails today because I want to find out if you need to be a pro rider to have fun here at Black Mountains. Before we dive in, this channel's all about mountain biking, so if you are too, please consider subscribing. If you do, don't forget to click the bell icon so you can be one of the first to know when I upload new videos. My guess is that if you're watching this video, you're thinking about riding here at Black Mountain Cycle Centre, and you may well be thinking, is it for me? Will I be able to turn up and ride? Or is it just for the big hitters? And I'm hoping that I can help to answer those questions. If you watch this video from start to finish, you'll see that there are a good number of blue trails here, which cater for the intermediate rider. In truth, there are actually more blue trails than red, but what are they like to ride? Well, first of all, on a day like today, where the ground's hard and dry, they are fast. Not podium finish in the egg and spoon race fast either, properly fast. Whilst it's important to know that, it is something that you can take steps to mitigate. Your bike's got brakes, probably, and there's no one here standing watch calling you out for using them too much. If you're sensible, the speed of the trail shouldn't be that much of an issue. That said, you do need to apply the brakes at the right time. Secondly, all of the blue trails can be rolled. There aren't any drops or mandatory gaps on the blue lines, so there isn't a single feature that requires you to leave the ground in order to negotiate it. There are plenty of features that will launch you into the air if you're travelling at speed, but how fast you travel is largely down to you. Third, everyone I talked to on the trails and on the uplift was super friendly. Nobody will care if you're the slowest down the hill, or that you're not picking up style points as you go. They are just there to ride, the same as you. If you're worried about holding people up, or you don't want people following you down the trail, just make sure to let everyone else start ahead of you. Missing Link follows on from Rabbit Run. It's not as steep as the trails further up the hill, but it does give us some choices, because from it you can access three other blue trails, Burn Baby Burn, Well Oiled Weasel, and Superflow right down at the bottom. At this point, we're gonna leave Missing Link on the left, and join Burn Baby Burn over on the right. Don't worry though, We'll come back to Missing Link in just a minute. You can probably guess why this section is called Burn Baby Burn. There are around 20 burns, some large and some small, one after the other, all the way down the hill to Superflow. Some parts of the trail are loose and dusty, but the seemingly unending string of burns give plenty of grip. With that little detour out of the way, we can head back to take a look at the rest of Missing Link. Remember how I fell off earlier? Well look how hard I'm trying to do it again. After having taken various routes down the hill all afternoon, I can tell you that you'll be making 2 to 2.2 kilometres per run, 
which is enough to enjoy yourself, but not quite enough to get on pump whilst you're doing it. It's also super hot today, but because the uplift runs from the car park, stopping off at the car for a drink isn't a big deal. You might recall seeing a couple standing in the trail a little earlier. Well, it turns out that they were standing there because the guy had just been stung by a wasp. How do I know this? Did you get stung on the way down? <laughs> yeah. Why would you do that? <laughs> As it happens, they were standing at the entrance to Well-Oiled Weasel. Like parts of Burn Baby Burn, Well-Oiled Weasel has quite a loose surface. With the weather being as dry as it is, the surface is actually powdery, but it doesn't feel like I'm losing any grip because of it. Well, I say that now, but a little further ahead, I'm going to brake hard on a fast approach to a left-hand berm, and I'm not going to slow down as quickly as I would have liked. It's almost certainly nothing to do with my razor-sharp reactions and boundless ability, so I'm going to point the finger squarely at the trail. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. Finally, we've made it down to Superflow. I really enjoyed this section a lot. The tabletops are a great size and it flows really well. On this run, I didn't quite manage it, but if you get your speed and timing right, you can gap the roller straight out of this step up. At the beginning of this video, I asked if you need to be a pro rider to enjoy the trails here, and the answer is a definite no. If you've got a little bit of confidence, and you're careful, you can do exactly what we've done and have a blast riding just the blues. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, it really does help, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button too. For now, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again.